There we go. Now we're in hour two, a bit late, but thanks, Jackie, for reminding me because I would have completely forgot. Did um did anyone have anything that they were wanting some help with, or like I said, or just something cool they've been working on lately that they want to share? Oh, looks like there's a message on there. Um, Dimitri has a Chrome question. Right on, is Dimitri? Uh, good evening. Uh, wait, I'll share my screen. Uh, always forget where it is. <clears throat> where can I share my screen? At yeah. the bottom of the, the view, normally. Look for like the green the button. Green button. Ah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I've done some web scraping. And uh, are you seeing my screen? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, this is a web page that is actually a database from a company. And I want to try to collect this value if the checkbox is checked or not. As a proof of con concept, I here try to target the uh, this value. And if you let it run, you can see here, it's, it is collecting it. So that works. But the, the strange thing is, if you go look into the HTML code, you do not see the value of that field. Uh, ain't you what? What are you? The, the, the value total energy projects. I cannot find it in the HTML page codes. Um, could you open the span class in there right in top, right, hold on, right on top of that? Right. So hold on. Um, I do have an input there. But I, I found the solution. Uh, if you go here with accessibility, <laughs> you can find it here as a value. Yeah. And also in my code, I tried to collect the, uh, the value of the element and then he gets it. You, it so does get is, it? Is that what you said? Yes, it does get it. But for the checkbox, I, I failed to get it. I will first let you see that I got the correct element by tracking the outer HTML code. So it finds it. But but where do you see the value on the developer tools? Can you can you show you that? see it here with accessibility and here with value? No, that that doesn't make sense. Right, that's that's what I'm saying. Like he he's not click either the page is not showing the correct information here on the HTML because I don't know why he has to go to accessibility. No, because here, when when you point at the check mark, can you try and do that again? Yeah. And no, it wasn't pointing at the check mark. Yeah. Here's the check box. There's the check box. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you find here the value checked, and it's yeah. true. So that's and, the value. And have have you tried to, to check the checked value? Yeah, I tried to collect it, but it failed. Uh, I'll activate this one. I do not no, think no, I need to know. Not the value, just. No, 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 just checked. Uh -huh. Yeah, that is indeed true. But it comes out empty. And that is my question. But I'm actually, not seeing it. Where, where, where at where? the bottom, uh, bottom left, lines one or two in there. Yeah, it says yeah. empty. But the problem is, again, hold on. You're getting the elements, you're getting several elements by class name. But quick question, did you, instead of checked there, can you go ahead and verify the length of, of, the, of the function instead of the zero, remove the zero there, remove the zero first. In the array, yeah. Yeah. Just remove that. I'll make a copy. Mm. Right, exactly. So remove that and let's see if you actually got something there. Yeah, okay. 
one. Okay, so you did get one. Okay, so you did get one. So the zero, you put the zero and set the um, zero and instead of checked, just check for value there, right? There it is. It's on. Right, yeah. that's what you were gonna get. The problem but is- it, If it's off? Uh-huh, it should be off now. It's oh. still on. That's interesting. Yes. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. Um, does that website does that website needs you to save the information before? It still, uh, should still yes. update. It is a save. Right. Thing. So even even if we so so try, uh, can you save the information? Like turn it off and save it and check if you get the off in here to but, see if uh, what you're getting. Because I'll just. What, uh, because it's actually official right. data. I'll oh, no, no, you another. Cannot. Right, right. Uh, here it's off. Right, so try that one. It should say off in there. It's still on. No, but hold that, on. Are you getting the same page? Else. No, that's, yeah. Are you yeah, getting the I same can, page? Uh, right, so still a matter of actually checking if the box is checked on. or not. Right, so. it is It is that, but it, it was supposed to be uh, instead of, of, and actually when it says customer company, that's what you are actually setting off in here. Hold on, it says customer company, new line, clear. But what happens when you turn it on and off? If you just turn it off now or turn it on, sorry, what what actually happens in the draft tools? The class actually changes. The, yeah, the mm. class changes, right? Oh. It's true. So try and turn it off again. Oh, but hold on, that's for focused. If you remove, if you click on another, if you click on another, yeah, Upwards. right. Maybe that. Huh. Actually, try the following. You see where where you're where you're evaluating you find your code? right element for us to see it. Right, and I'm exactly. seeing that it had an ID. Try I saw and, like ID three. What was it? Yeah, it doesn't. It it's a type. It's a checkbox type, right? And if you click it on now, what does does the input do anything? Yeah, it does so actually the change. Check value changes yeah but the class changed it well as right. well right that's the thing so so the the way how he's getting the element which is by the get element by id is not the best way to do it because he's mm -hmm. oh, no sorry the get element by class name that's not the best way to do it because he only has this one class defined there but what he can do remove the option of focus uh, focused or but you have it yeah that's that's almost Good. No, but at one point it says focusable, but it does keep say, saying that if you actually click it, what does it then say? It says focused, but it doesn't matter because in that case, it would get the correct value. No, yes. no. If, uh... if it is the first one, because that's the problem, there are several of them and the first one changes. So the, re the, the problem here is the way of getting that particular class name. So the selector has to change what I would do actually would be that same selector and probably um, I would use something else from one of the of the previous selectors like the field set um, because you see the span that is on top of it maybe that's what you should do you see um, wait if now the uh, class is good you will collect it. that's true yeah. yes Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to and see now when I you change it, on, and it and should still get it right. It it is different. It says changed now. It's yeah, changed, but that's the only thing. It should still get it because it, with get element by class name, it doesn't need to be exact. It just exactly, needs but to be but the, the problem. Match. Yeah, but the problem is that um, there are several because he's using the function get elements by class name so yeah the but zero one might change might be a, another one and it, it, he's showing here that the outer html is the correct one even though it says changed down there so it is the correct one um yeah it is the correct one so i'm saying his his 
capturing still getting only one talent. right like, yes. it is he's unable to use the value of it but he could probably um, check give me just one second uh, the value of checked if checked actually goes away does checked go away when you remove the checkpoint uh, we did that yeah but i didn't actually look at the check over in the access and serviceability part. So it says checked equals false. And now so, it becomes true. Yeah. So you should be able to get the value of checked. Yes. Um, so when you actually check the value of checked and it says uh, one or whatever it said, is is that what it's doing now? Did you run that? It should. It if it is one right now. Is that the cur the current value? No, no, that so, is empty. So now right. it's so, blank. So, empty. Right. So so it's not getting the value of checked. Yes. So is, oh, maybe is, it is getting it, but it's not the correct format, and it doesn't convert it correctly. I don't know. It should still be true or false, and so one or zero, or the words true and false, um, something like that should still be what you would see here. But maybe checked ain't a direct um, attribute you can connect to that way. You might actually need to go through the attribute object to get it. Angel put some stuff in the chat. I don't know if you want to try it. Um... Yeah, get attribute checked, exactly. So uh, try and, and copy that from the chat if you can, Dimitri. Uh, I'll need to put this. For those of you who, who don't do a lot of web scraping, this is, this is why I always say, I wish I had learned all this stuff on Excel um, or Outlook because web scraping is just so much harder so much more complicated, depending on yeah. how you build the, build the page. Yeah, that's one of the things, the way how they- This thing close quote? There's a miss, the double quotes are incorrect on the content, underscore content. I see a double quote and a single quote. Is that right? No, I don't think. Okay, so on line thirty-seven, line thirty-seven, you have a you have a problem where it says yeah. content with no. Go back yeah. a little bit. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. There. There. The right there. No, I, I don't think that's an issue. It seems right. Oh, okay. No, no, no that's issue. okay. Okay, a, okay, okay. Yeah, it was at the end the, here. Okay. I I copied it with an enter. That was a problem. I okay. I think. No, it's still empty. Can you get a list of attributes? I can't even remember if you can return that as a, an emulatable object. I don't remember. To, to... Uh, there is there's a function that actually takes those things and see if they're an object, but I'm not sure if that's going to help. I do just believe that you can actually get um, an, an object it. with the, the different attributes that an object has, but I, I simply don't. I mean, from there directly from Chrome or or in AHK? Yeah, I've I've never done this in Chrome. I've always done my stuff with um, the built-in IE stuff. So, but most of it is still um, the same. Yeah, it is. If he goes to the to the developer tools in Google. You should have the option to see all the attributes that are right now attributed to that particular thing. So you just click on the option. So if you click use the inspector and click on the on the checkbox, right? So if you do that. Now on the right side, yeah. Um, yeah, that at the top, there should be either the layout 
Let me see. Hold on. Nope. Um, if um, here properties. In Chrome Click on and property. Firefox, it seems to just be the 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 attribute instead of get attribute. If you just use the word attribute. Oh, okay. You mean like the function itself? Yeah. Okay. So where you have instead of get attribute and with an S. And remove the check, yeah. And then um, dot length. Let's see if it actually has a length. Three. Okay. It has a length of three. So uh, knowing this, we should be able to figure out what those three um, attributes are. Value, yeah, or HTML. So the first value was apparently the class. Yeah, okay, but I think we will just get the class, the app, and the type. Yeah, this that's, way. that's that's probably. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the, the type. Yeah, that's the app, yeah. And that's the type. Okay. So that's the scene ones from that part. And when you look at it under the um, uh, accessibility part, you have the name. The computer properties, the role checkbox, embedded user embedded, focusable, checked, labeled by. These values should be somewhere connected. So to those, are, those are the ones that he's trying to access by saying like, for example, um, uh, focusable like, like at the end in 937 at the end, instead of attributes, he's just putting there uh, checked and see it should return true, but it doesn't. It's yes. coming on blank. That's the problem. And yeah. uh, what I, I have to say, uh, not all the values are in the directly in the HTML code. Exactly. No, it is no, not no. in the HTML. If I would just search for Timmermans in the HTML code, I wouldn't find it. And that's no, no, strange. that's strange. It is not really strange there, especially with the input type, uh, because for the input, you have different types of inputs. In this case, it's a checkbox. It can be a password. It can be an email. And those the information saved in them are not directly shown on the HTML. They're shown um, inside the object itself. Um, now, what you are trying is correct. So here on line 37 you see the last part of it where it says attributes to the value if you remove that yeah and that should give you um well the checked if you put checked instead of value if you put checked there right checked that and can you, tr this is, yeah, just do that. That should be true in there. Now, the, the, the one thing that I'm actually kind of wondering, just for fun, I know this is not going to work, but can you put check with the, with the capital C, please? This is right now, because I see here on the right side that it is actually with a capital C, but, and JavaScript is actually, um, uh, you know, case sensitive, case sensitive, right? But the problem here, I think, is not that the thing does not have the value, it's, that's not the problem. You see here, if you put a uh, value with a capital V, it, right. doesn't, it doesn't return work. anything. Right. right, But if you put it with a small letter, it does right. return it. Right. Huh. 
But this is interesting, actually, the, because you are accessing the correct value. It might happen. One of the things that can happen is that the page has certain things to stop that specifically. They do that sometimes. Yeah, but wouldn't it also stop the... Everything uh, else, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That's what I thought. But it can happen. But to to put a disclaimer, I found another way to to find out if it was a company or not. So that's not really my issue. But I just was wondering, why can't I access that value? There are other ways to get the same result. Uh, that's not a problem yeah. for me. If, but it, it was strange. <laughs> it is, actually. It is strange, actually. Um, because you are getting the attributes. You are getting the correct element every time. And you can get the, the values for, uh, hold on, quick question. Are there any other checkboxes on this form? Is there any other checkbox that you could actually try this on to see if all of them are failing or just this one? Um... That's the only checkbox in there. Huh, that's interesting. The late said one, right? So. There's another Use one. Checkbox. Can can you try and get the value for that one? Uh, it has a class. So. You put um, a space, uh, an extra space, maybe? I don't know. At the end of fo focus all. Focus all. Ah, yeah. But let's see if I manage to get it. Right. Yeah, I get. I, I now just request the outer HTML just to check right. if I have the element. And yeah. then the most logical thing to request Happened, would be the right. value that, check. That, yeah, exactly. But That's... it is empty. So something, there's something in that particular form. And um, what I would try when you have a little bit of time is go to another website, not this one. Just go to another website and try to get the value of a checkbox mm -hmm. and see if it works. If in another website works, but in yours doesn't, then there's something in the code that actually is preventing you from it. Did you did you ask for the checked value? Did did you try that? Yeah, that's what he says. Looking at some other stuff. So. Oh uh, yeah, he tried. Okay, so he has had that value on there. Yeah. Quick, quick question, actually, just for fun again. You see, in line thirty-eight, the last part where it says dot value. Can you remove that? Uh, 38 dot ah right but can you I remove wouldn't that get anything yeah no, I know that's, that's part of the, the chrome library yeah, yeah I know it's okay and uh, what I wanted to do is like all that thing like from no no what I want to no, no not that what I want you to do is to no, we, check we if can that try is it, but I don't think it will work no <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I want you to try is if that's an object. No, it's, you uh, remove the value and check yeah. if that is an object. So remove that, remove the dot. Yeah. Now go okay. to where it says tab inst. Uh huh. Where it says tab inst at the beginning yeah. of 38. Well, he can just do it right there. Right. So then you go and say is object. Exactly. And yeah, that should return a one. Yeah, okay. it is an object. So basically you are getting a value. And when you use the dot value, you are getting something. The only thing is that you're not seeing it. That's what happens. Well, do you have a something to peek inside there to see all the options, you know, all the things that the object has? I think yeah. uh, string type. Auto hotkey studio has something like that. That's what was it again? I don't know if it's built in, but um, um, hold on. 
Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll paste this. Actually, I'll paste the whole thing in there. Um, you're going to want to replace uh, the OBJ. I just have a hot string for it because I use it so much. The OBJ at the very middle um, is what you'd want to put your object as. So yeah, it's not, unfortunately, it's not built into Studio. I've got Kitty collected. Right. It's not a big, I could actually probably post it in the, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with objects, you know, you can't just do a message box and see the content of an object, right? You got to iterate over it. And, if it if it is a real object, no, you can't. <laughs> here, I'm gonna I'm gonna paste it the object to string in the the chat here. Zero. Nothing happened. Oh, I, I get I mean, a, a zero. Yeah. Oh, you got a zero. Yeah. Okay. And now nothing. And now it's blank. You see that? <laughs> Strange. Hold on. Why is why is um, customer company having a one at the end now? Why is that? You say you say like at the at the bottom in the debugger window it says customer company one. Ah, because it is an ob ah oh, yeah. because it is an object. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this okay. should be the correct. That's funny. Yeah. There you go. It says type boolean and, and the value is empty. And that's weird. It cannot be empty. It's a boolean type. It can never be empty. It is either true or false. Well, There's a problem. Go, go there. check the box and see if that changes. Uh, wait, now I'm still connecting to. Oh. I think we're. That's the new one, right? That's the new one that we. Yeah, worked indeed. On, right. So this is the old one, and I'll remove this. It's still going to come out empty. So what is going on is the following. That is a Boolean type, right? It should be true or false. But for some reason, that page is setting it incorrectly. Now, the other thing is um, you might want to try this on another website because what might happen is that whether the uh, Chrome.hk class might have an issue might have a, a, a bug in there, which I really doubt because I have been using it. And actually this last few weeks, I have been trying, I have been playing a lot with Chrome HK. So I haven't had an issue with, um, with that, but you should try it anyways in another website to see if you can get the checkbox. If not, then that's a problem with the class. If you do get a checkbox in another website, then this website has a problem when they're maybe not a problem or maybe they are having some way how they do that code that it does not set the value correctly because it is a boolean type but boolean types cannot be empty ever it can either be, either be true or false always so there's a problem there but not it might not be your fault it might be the fault of um, that website or the library itself because you're targeting the correct thing and, and this is getting a little off topic, but the one thing that confuses me is the page does work, right? And we are literally looking at the code that builds the page. So how can what you're saying be true? Because like, well, we can see it gets checked and not checked, right? And that gets recorded. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, but I, I can, can tell you how, how yeah. right? I can tell you how. Very likely when you click on that checkbox, it calls either a function or something that yeah. grabs the information, okay. works with it, and then the value is not set. So they actually work with the data, 
but you cannot access it right. from outside of it. It can happen. It, that's one way that it can work. Yeah, I, I remember more with IE, but when the whole event listener thing, I'm like, but everything's right here. I see it, but that's not where the stuff is happening. So I, I get, at least I understand the concept. Thank you. I'm, so very likely either either there's an event listener or this little thing has or that class uh, is calling Which, something that you're not seeing right now and it's actually setting the value for you. You know what, um, and uh, Dimitri, I, I think you've mentioned you've watched him, but um, Geek Dude, when we worked through, because one of them we made a video on how to get text from a page if there's like a listening event or something and we went through a couple different sites and he mentioned hey look for these things in the background like uh what was the um it's the uh jquery and other things right libraries that the sites are using and what you're looking at isn't a typical thing right but i'd say i mean I, you know it was all over my head I, I learned a lot then but i've forgotten the vast majority of it but m maybe maybe again that he could you can see this this isn't a typical thing um, the way we think it is. No, in this yeah. case, it is not normal, right? <laughs> yeah, I also watched uh, the videos and it's... Uh, and uh, I, I try to not to use Selenium because I like the way that you don't need to install anything yeah, exactly. uh, with uh, Chrome, but yeah. Arca. And uh, also, I need to use the codes on another co other computer, so that's right. way easier right. to do it this way. And actually, I I already figured out how to do it, depending on whether uh, other elements are hidden or not, to define if it's a company or not. So I have a solution, but I was just wondering. Could why I couldn't get the value yeah, of that yeah. checkbox. <laughs> but, but, but you know what? I'm going to tell you something. You know how whenever you click on it, the class changes. That tells you there's a function that is being called that is working with all that information. And it's actually changing the input class no. and everything. But it's not actually setting up the value for it. Could, it, seems, it seems as if, uh, from what I'm reading, it might simply be using um, uh, a pseudo... Uh, class. It's a, a CSS way of actually showing and not showing the check mark on it. Mm. So it's not really um, uh, a value of the element. It's uh, a styling of the element. So you can't really get it from uh, checking the check value, but you might be able to do it by checking the styles. Of Angel yeah, put up something in the chat, by the way, for, for using the XPath approach. Um, but given what you just said, Jackie, I, I understand your point there. Um, it's not doing it in a traditional way. Exactly. That, 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 that's actually kind of obvious. It is not the traditional ways. That's actually not the normal way of working. They're using a workaround either by calling something that is updating the class or, as Jackie just said, that maybe it is just a, a CSS thing. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't answer the question. How do they know that it's checked or not? Because if it is just a style, then they would need a function to check on that style, you know? So yeah, but that's, that's right. done using the class right. because it actually gets the, the word when he checks it and, and this check it. Uh, you can see it in the class that it's checked or when it's not there, it's not checked. Then, so then, he, could, the then he could actually just use the class itself then. Yeah. Okay, you can oh, do that. Oh, interesting. So, so depending yeah. on what class is there, that use that as the indicator, basically. Very likely. Yeah. Let's uh, see. Uh, hello. Hey, someone is trying to hey. say something. Yeah, I, I can we try like a little expat thing? Is to yeah, let's try it. Yeah. So in in the HTML. Just let's let's be sure we can find this uh, expression uh, on the on the element um, on the on on Chrome on the developer when you see the where you see the HTML uh, on Chrome. One, one second, I I have some example codes to use uh, expats. So. 
I think he was just yeah. going to try it out without using the Chrome library. He's going to try it directly. No, no, yeah, exactly. So he's not trying to use it on the HK script. He just wants you to go to the developer console and type it there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right. so that way you don't have to wait for it. Just well, there it, at the bottom. At least this way, because if it doesn't work there, there's no way we can do it. Exactly. Right. So it doesn't matter if we. So so you you type uh, Control F to uh, on the elements. Oh no, on the elements. Sorry, on the elements. Uh, Press Control F to bring okay. up the yeah, and, and I, I I send you one a string on the uh, no not that I send you on the chat on the yeah, yeah. I, I think it's one. this one uh no it's, let me it's, let me just put it again the second one yeah just that contains class app db field. Okay, now try to run this, um, that last. Uh, so now, instant. right. Yeah. That last, um, I sent you another one, but yeah. in the in the code, in your our hotkey code. Instead okay. of, yeah, instead of the, the previous one you were trying. Okay. So for, for those of you, again, if you're not too familiar with web scraping, in the, the browser, there's like a console you can go to and you can navigate the DOM by typing in things and doing stuff. And it's it's basically similar to how we're you know doing things with the browser as well, but you do it directly on the browser. No, this is strange. Oh, but but uh, I think you have to. But but it is not selected. Look, it is it is it is uh, unchecked. Uh, are you using O Chrome as the or? No, he's using Tab Instance. Oh, okay, so... that. And, uh, or uh, can you uh, replace Tab uh, O Chrome by Tab Instance? Maybe. Ah uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. But... No. Boy, you really had me confused there for a second, Jackie. I'm like, what the hell are you guys talking about? <laughs> oh, no. I think for, for, for that method, you will have to use the Chrome um, the Chrome thing. The developer uh, tool? Yeah, no, but let me. Uh, yeah, the, this, this thing, let me put it on the chat that function, but I don't know if you are using that, that already. I'm, I'm using it. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Something similar. Okay. Mm. Yeah, no, the only thing there is that I wanted to make sure you are using the Chrome instance, but, but yeah, it isn't yes. working for some reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that checkbox is funny, right? <laughs> yeah. so, they, they, I think they are, they're actually what I, what I would think is they're grabbing the information somehow either uh, outside of the normal functions, updating the HTML, and then they don't set up the value for that uh, input. That's what it's called. For an entirely different approach, um, at least for just getting to see what was there, I mean, could you do like a, an API call to to get the page and, and do anything with that? Would that change anything? Um, I don't think so. It, it would not change anything because if it is a script, um, can you can you check in here in the in the HTML if there's any scripts? like script labels or something. Or what I would do is just go to here on the left. Let me go ahead and hold on. Here, check if there are any DOM listeners. There are event listeners, I think. No, uh, there's one that's Breakouts. called event, uh, event uh, listeners. Yeah. You can um, actually turn it on to, to wait yes. and then click the button and it'll show you what gets right. triggered, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yep. so what we want to know is exactly when you click in here, if there's anything that is uh, waiting for it. I'm not sure. Can you, can you open, pull that up a little bit to see if there's any options in there? In this 
No, no, no. No, just, just grab this guy here on the corner and pull it off. Make it, uh-huh. Okay. So let me see something. So basically, uh, framework. It's the DOM breakpoints, I, I think. That's where you go in and you tell it. Where you want to break, right? But. I swear that's where that was. No, no, but yeah, but that's they don't have any breakpoints in there okay. right now. Okay. Right, so the event listener is if, is if you click somewhere. So basically what I would actually check on is on the click event here. You see that event that is there? What I want to know is, where you see that? So is that is that field the one that we're trying to access? Uh, I think that's the one. That's exactly the one that we're talking about. Yeah, I think because we, we selected it. No, no. Uh, click on something else. Click on something else on the page, whatever you want. Okay, perfect. Now, okay. when you click on the when you click on the checkbox, yes. and you open it, let me see. Hold on, no, do not open everything. I just want to know if there's some, because it says that it is not capturing, and it is not passive, so it doesn't look like it is there in it either. That is what interesting. Are, can you explain what that means? But, um, yeah, so sometimes you can set an input to capture the click. So it is not yeah. actually capturing the click. And sometimes from, you could also, yeah, go ahead. From, from what I'm reading while you're testing and doing your, uh, recently it became possible to actually uh, retrieve um, these pseudo elements um, using JavaScript, which hasn't been possible before. So you would be able to use like a query selector like you usually would, and then you would be able to get the property value of uh, uh, like the before or the checked um, pseudo class on something like this. And that's what I'm pretty sure is actually happening here. Yeah. That the checked value is a pseudo um, element. So if you looked at the CSS, the styling of the element, mm -hmm. uh, can you actually try and do that? I think you could. Look you would the style. The style so well. yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. And there should be one for on on here. You see here on the top, on the top right. Those are the styles. Click on that. There should be the on hover active. So if you click on one of them, maybe the act. I. That's to force the element state. Those are the element states that you can have. And when you, f when you click on focus, check on focus. I just noticed that it changed. Yeah, you see yes. that it changes everything. Yes. So that's the style that applies when you focus it. And actually, what I notice is that when you click on it, it grabs the focus state. So it does change a lot of things, but I don't think you can and change the value. Further down, you have more stuff huh, here. here. So if you actually see if you can find the, the colon uh, checked, if you check it, try and do that. I think that it actually has that pseudo. Um, you can filter here. You see where it says filter? You can go ahead in there and, and just type um, check. checked. Mm, appearance checkbox. I, I have never heard that you could actually do that on, on CSS directly. No, it's something I just found. I, I haven't used it before. How about if you actually check the element? What then happens? So, more stuff did happen. Initial, initial, no, that's not it. An appearance checkbox under that input, that one, that added, right? That wasn't there before. Yeah. Uh, the appearance, you say? Yeah, it wasn't listed. I swear it wasn't listed. It's not going yeah. away, though. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see, hold on. Just just click on it and let it and let it for a few seconds because sometimes it takes a little while for it to update. 
for the thing to refresh. And, 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 and yeah, and here, just type check again. Just, just. Oh. Uh, ah, yeah. Okay, so it goes away. So it goes away. And when you actually click on it, it actually adds the appearance checkbox. Is that what you say? Um, yeah, where there is now, it? now, right? It's near the bottom, near the bottom green bar. Uh -huh. Right, that wasn't there before. All right, yeah. so maybe oh. maybe that's what changes. Yeah, appearance. Uh, it changes appearance to right. checkbox. Right, and maybe that's the information that they're grabbing to see if that's checked or not, and maybe that you you can target that. But for that, you would have to grab the CSS information. I think it'd just be easier to quit and get a different job. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but no, the, the easiest thing is to to check if other elements become hidden because that's the right. same effect. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. right. But basically, that's it. Seems to me that is true. Is is as Jackie is saying. Um, the the they're changing the styles of it, which is a totally weird thing to do. That has nothing to do with styles. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, in the chat. I'm I'm going to to post a link to the actually yeah, quite be small great. thing uh, I found where they're talking about it. Um, just so I don't know if anybody want to pull it up, but they're talking about the CS pseudo elements that are incredibly useful and they're used more and more, sure. And then elements before can have content, it can have color settings, it can have all kinds of stuff. And you can use get property value of stuff um, or you can use the windows object of something and get computed styles. And that's one of the things we actually saw under um, the accessibility when you were over there, mm -hmm. just above where you actually found that it was checked, it said computed styles. So if you go to the developer tools, Dimitri, and go to your accessibility uh, tab, Um, so it, just above where you're at right now, at the top of that shows computed properties. So I was like, maybe well, the thing is, the things that okay. So so basically, the things that pseudo elements are has they are a thing in CSS. That's okay. And computer properties, what it means is what is at the end. So after the processor from the browser grabbed everything from the CSS and whatever it is, this is the end result. That's what it says for with computer computed properties. But the problem, yeah. the only thing that I find weird on those and this whole situation would be if they use the CSS to check the value of that checkbox, that would be very weird. Because if they already set that input as a checkbox, then use the freaking Boolean type that it has. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's very weird. No, the thing is that that value is not going to show up like that. Like get property values, the appearance is not that. It's not. That's for the CSS. You're trying to access their things that are in the DOM, the document object model, and the CSS is not um, presented as an object in there. That's not going to show up in there like that. Okay. Yeah, it was worth to try. <laughs> yeah. But in this case, um, I think your solution, which is finding something that is getting hidden, would be the best in your case. And the thing is that their approach to this checkbox is unorthodox. It's kind of out of the box. It's kind of like weird. And I don't know why would they do that. There is no reason for it. <laughs> they could just use the Boolean type that it has. Um, maybe they just didn't care. They just coded very quickly and didn't care about it. Well, you, but you know what? I mean, it's, it's one of those things I, I find web developers get very creative. I'm like, hey, look at this cool thing. Hey, I did this, right? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. And then everybody <laughs> is left and with them. I, I, I still got another question. Uh, here you see, for example, name, uh, bedrijf, 
question mark and how is it yeah how is it calculated is it the is it really a property of the element or does it just is calculated that the string before it is no no it is it is it is the 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 tag that you're using so go uh, you can pull this little thing down the the um, yeah pull it to the right and you see where it says input class right yes there is something that says label on top of it can you see it the input yes. class is nested under the label the label is going to grab the first thing that you have in that span class that text ah okay so um, the input class is going to look for the, the the top label element that had that, that is right before it and whatever that label uh, has as a text you will see it in there in the computer program I've run into that before. I didn't understand it, but uh, I, yeah, it seemed it's weird how they do that. Yeah, it is kind of uh, well. The thing is that um, they didn't. You see, the the input uh, uh, itself, the input tag, does not have kind of text inside it. Uh, have you noticed that, right? Right, right. Because you're gonna wait for text, so you can oh, right. put text in there. So what they decided was, well, we're gonna use a label that is going to contain the text that is going to be displayed for that particular uh, type of input. I, I tried to search the, the customer type and the code. So maybe there I could find something. Yeah, there's like 35 mentions of it. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to find something in there. Don't worry. <laughs> but it's, it's all code, so quite hard to figure it out. Yeah, I'll, I'll mentioned image search it. Yeah, I mean, at some point for me too, I'd be like, you know what? Yeah, sometimes it's just, the problem is if you have multiple of them, uh, and that's where that, that stupid tool I made, right? The uh, automate my task, but you could anchor it, right? So you could look to the left and say, look for this. And when you find a checkbox, you know, over here next to this right. word, that, that's what would, would help it lock it down. But right. Yeah. So, we're at okay, the so we're good. end of the second hour here. Um, what I did want to also mention is the, the one of the reasons why uh, as AES has been doing stuff in Chrome is we've been working on an, another like an IWB2 learner tool. You know what that is and for IE? Uh, we have one, It's it's we're testing it, but it's for Chrome. And so you can drag in Chrome and, and have a nice, instead of having 8 million things to look at, right. just give you a couple things to look at. I could, so, I could show them real quick. That, if, yeah. yeah. If, let me okay, show it. I'm also interested. <laughs> yeah, right. Let me show you. And thank you, Dimitri, for bringing that up. It's you know, it because it, I'm sure a lot of people learned a lot there of just you know, one is, is good lord, uh, web scraping can really be complex, but um, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Um, can you hear me, guys? Right? Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Have Have any of you? Oh, sorry. I'm I'm just cutting in here. I, I, <laughs> Don't worry. Cutting. Welcome but, back. Um, yeah. The The function get computed style, where mm -hmm. you can actually pass it an element. Uh, would Would that return something in in Dimitri's case here? I've never actually used a property get computed but, style. But the, the thing is that, that that function, I don't think you can pass information to it. What it does is but actually read what the last information is, right? Or Yeah, apparently that's what is shown here. The window uh -huh. dot get computed style method returns an object containing the values of all CSS properties of an element. Yeah, After exactly. applying active style sheets and resolving any basic computer these values may contain oh yeah exactly so basically basically yes it would help a lot because that's the last state on, in which that checkbox is so so if the checkbox already has the the computed style of i'm checked then you could actually gather that with that function yeah i would say 
Why don't you demo this real quickly, Isaiah? And then for those of us that need to leave, you guys can leave, right? Um, we'll have it recorded. You can check back later. But maybe yeah. if Dimitri's up for it, he can give it a try here. But I, I'd love um, to just do a quick. Demo. I'll uh, I'll put up a link in chat here where I actually did find uh, this um, explained. If you want right. to check that out, that's good actually. Um, so uh, Dimitri mainly for you and for anybody else who is interested in, in, in um, trying to do programs uh, in our hotkey that will automate Chrome. Um, one of the things is that, um, let me go ahead and set up here because there I can have better uh, things to catch. So this uh, is the same as the old IE inspector in which you just click, it, it, it comes on up with um, your Chrome tab and whatever website you are going to work with. And whenever you click on it, it gives you the main information, whatever we're actually kind of most, mostly interested in. The most important part would be the ID. The, if an element has an ID, I could go ahead and target it very quickly. Let me just one second. There's like a lot of noise here. <laughs> so um, basically what we're going after is the main title, right? Uh, well, sorry, the IDs. That's what we're looking for. Elements that have IDs, but sometimes they do not have it. Now I did, I, I added the option to copy whatever, uh, whatever you have in these boxes, you're going to copy it in a specific uh uh, language, in this case, JavaScript, that you can use inside AutoHotKey. For example, if you're coding something, let me just go ahead and close this up and just show you. If I want that ID, I just click on it and it just copies it to the clipboard, but in the format that I have. In this case, would be document query selector all, and it's going to grab my ID and that's it. So basically, I could have code that I could just copy paste into, for example, Dimitri, what you're doing that you are using the Chrome uh, object, right? So in the Chrome object, you would just have something like Chrome instance, right? Then evaluate and you just have your parentheses there and then you just copy, click in there and just paste it. And you already have your, um, you have your uh, element selected. In the case that the end does not have an ID, that sometimes that happens, you can actually click on the class and it would also give you the, um, the selector for that uh, particular class. And if it has many classes, it is just gonna give you the selector, the, the correct selector for all of them, okay? So this is very easy for you to figure out uh, a website without having all the clutter that you have with the developer options because you have many things in here that most of them you do not use them right what you are looking for is just the id the class and in some cases for example if i do not have um, an id i could also use the parent structure to actually quickly review where is the next id that is very good in cases that you want to target one item, but it does not have an ID and the class is very common or whatever. You could use the previous ID as a selector. Um, let me go ahead and see if I could show you this. Basically, you can pause this up so you could use the website, right? And then when you just go ahead and take a look at it. So, let me see something. Um, yeah. So again, you can see that sometimes the item that you want to target does not contain either IDs or classes. How do you target it then? You can actually select selector of the previous ID and then just target it. Um, using, um, I don't know if you guys, if you have taken a look at this, but you could go ahead and, sorry, the CSS and the selectors class. If you go to the selectors 
here. Hey, hey Isaiah, let's hey, not go too deep, right? Because yeah, um, no. But I was gonna say, like, if you don't know how to do that, this is where you can look for it. They have a very good class on how you can do the selectors. Yeah, um, I'm just saying we'll we'll do all this again in another webinar or something, right? Very so. good. And in general, this is the part where you just grab one of the IDs and grab a selector for that particular item that you're looking for. The only thing is that, again, you can just click on it and it copies the selector for it. So you have less typing to do. Just click on it, just go to your AHK, paste it, and put the selector that you're looking for. So this is gonna save you a lot of time, right? So this is um, just a little tool that we have been working on. We're just testing it out to make sure that there are no bugs. And there are some other things that I would like to try uh, to automate a little bit more this process. But yeah, it, for yeah, people who are actually web scraping, this is a very good tool. Nice. Excellent. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank so you. let's go back. Well, if, if, you know, like I said, I, I know we're, you know, going long, but um, Dimitri, if you want to try this other solution real quick, I think it'd be great if we, I love when we actually solve things, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I would love to see the get computer styles used on with uh, with your checkbox element, just to see if it actually grabs something. You'd need to go from the Windows object, which I'm pretty sure you can you actually already have. Uh, yes. Uh, the Windows object is the Chrome, or is it Tab? Is yeah, I'm not sure because they're they're just showing um, JavaScript examples. So when they reference Windows, uh, they they mean the, the very top, and that's probably Tab instance. Try that. Yeah, the one above the document, right? Yeah. So then. Get computed style and then no that is, first no first if you get the actual element so you uh, evaluate and get the element that you want uh, so you remove the get computed style thing. right so so he's he he does have it so that one there yeah is the correct yeah that's yeah, that's the correct one right exactly and then you make a new one or a new line or an extra line. And tab well, instance. Name this element. And yeah, then why not do that? Yeah. And call that styles or whatever you want to call it. Uh, S style. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then tab instance and get computed style. Computed style. Hold on. Oh, do you have to do that? I'll um, here. Let me post a piece of the code from the link in the chat. Um, here you have. You use the document query selector to actually select a specific. Oh element. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then you use window you the, get the computer it. style. Yeah, okay. You pass it pass to it. That right. element. Okay. Right. So, so it pass the element to it. Yeah. Exactly. So. Not as a text string, exactly. yeah, exactly. And um, then you use what do you use? Do you use anything? Get property. So, the, so instead of value, don't don't catch the value because that's an object. You're gonna return. You're gonna get an object now. Yeah, we want to know the length of the object. Perhaps. Right. So so the length. Try to get the length and see if that's actually. I think. Right. Let's see if that actually returns a number. No, it does not. So an object was stringified, but is it an object when it actually is a string? Hold on. Hold on. You're calling. No, no, no. Tab instance. You see the tab instance? No, you're actually kind in there. You have to call evaluate first. I don't know that. I don't think that the tab instance has. Oh, that evaluate. Function. Yeah, right, fair right, enough. Right, right, right. Then you do. Uh, right. The window. Right. Yeah. Window. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'll. Just like you usually do. Yeah. Win. Um, I think it's lowercase window. 
and get would be um, with the lowercase g. That's g, uh -huh. and then put a dot in there. Window dot get computer style, right? Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it needs to be a string, and all that, that should stuff. be a string, and then now the value. Now yeah, get the value. yeah, he's he's doing it correctly. Right. You need to to make sure that the s or the e customer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it needs to be outside. That, that, that has to be outside of the string. Yeah, that is a that is a um, right. So that should be a, that's a variable. So it should be outside of the string, right? But <laughs> right, it's an object. Yeah, that's the object that we want to pass to it. Okay, that's, that's the idea. And then it says that there is argument required, but zero present. So it did not get that as a, as a parameter. It, is it blank? Can you, can, you, can you go ahead and check if that is an object? Just make a new line in there and say is object. Is object. I'll, I'll do it just quickly like this. Right. And then the customer company, right? That should be, yeah, it is, a, it is an object. Well, it, it <laughs> this does not accept that type of objects then. It should just accept a normal uh, element as can be seen in the- You know what, code right. I just pasted. right. So you see this in here from that quote to this quote, just grab it and paste it in there. Instead of the I've variable. I've already done it. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Now you get it. So, yeah. So the tab instance is returning a specific type of object that we cannot access. That's why. But yeah, but those three hundred and twenty are the are the styles for that particular object. That's good. So, so in there, one of those. So one of those, instead of length, what we would need there would be, um, oh, well, yeah, you could go ahead and loop and see them, <laughs> but there are 320 of them. <laughs> uh, if we could search, sure. Right. Yeah, but basically what you would, uh, the, the, the question, Jackie, would be how to access one of those values. Like, for example, can I access, access them by name or do I have to use another function to access them? Here it says compute styles get property value. Get property value. Right. But I'm not sure that's the only oh. way. This is a quick research, right? So. Get property value, and then you're going to have a parentheses. That's a function, and your quote in there. And that would be checked. Well, was that the one that showed here in accessibility? Oh, yeah, checked. So it should be it should be true at the end. That should say true then, um, according to logic. No, it's empty. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe. Sure to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, in your variable, you have an extra s on the. I don't know if that. That's that's correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Correct. Oh, sorry. Yes. My bad. That's interesting. Um, but hold on, the properties that you're getting are from the CSS. You remember that we were in the styles, and you actually um, saw one that says. Because what you're getting is this guy here, um, appearance, look for appearance, not checked. Look for appearance. Appearance that you had around there. Oh, there it is, appearance. It should say checkbox. Um, I'm not sure if you have to get the value, dot value maybe. Not yeah, sure how that one works. Doesn't seem like you need Doesn't to. Doesn't seem like that, right? I thought no. you had to try it. Oh, there it is. Oh. How about if you uncheck it? If you uncheck it, what happens? 
<laughs> ah, no. So yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> the appearance is still checkbox. But, right. It, it is um, always going to be that. But there might be one of those. But this is funny because um, when when it is unchecked, right here, um, can you can you clear the search in here, please? Because that disappears. Well, you see, so it is not there any longer. What? So it is it not is there. Checkbox. So, 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 oh, it is there. <laughs> oh, no, because Joe said that it disappeared. Oh, oh, was it Jackie? No, I didn't say that. But um, if you actually did clear, oh, no, so, appearance search, is there. so we can see whatever it's finding about that element, can you clear it completely? Make right, it so, fine. Right. So those are all the things that he's getting. Yeah. From the but, top would be the closest to the element, right? Right, yeah. So the element doesn't have specific styling of its own, but input type checkbox. It has does, a height, that's it. Does have a height. And then from there on down, stuff starts happening. There's some before right. pseudo element and an after pseudo element. What and, we're looking for is if there's any change when you check on it or not. And of course there is, but I don't. I, I, there was one of them. I know that the appearance, well, the appearance is there. Yeah. Actually, um, when you had, when you were checking on the accessibility in there, um, did, when you uncheck the, when you uncheck the, the box here, does it say false in here? Oh yeah, it, it does. does. Right, so it has the information. The one uh, thing is that the, we cannot access it. It was uh, a capital. Could yeah, the, the, that's one of the things that I tried that I, when I told you that it, that we should put it in capital, but no, I don't. No, the thing is that that is not a property. I think. Yeah. That's not a property. No, but um, it might be a pseudo element. Right. So the, 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 the funny thing is, where is that pseudo element in the styles? So when you go to the styles, which is the pseudo element that has that information? And I don't see any of them. No. I'm not seeing it either. Right. So, so, so we've, we've maybe the label. To no. inherit it. Right. We it inherit that. Yeah, right. It should be further down than this element. The element should get the pseudo style as soon as he actually interacts with it. But I'm not seeing that being updated in here. Now, if there was a way for for uh, one to access that website and give some testing, I could in the end tell you more or less what is going on. Um, because even though I do see that the styles get updated, um, pseudo after sure. element, pseudo resizer element, before, after, down? resize, scroll bar, scroll, scroll bar, bar, go, go down, go down, more? selection, maybe that. that yeah, none of these <laughs> can, can you can you can you check on the field or not? Let me see how if that changes the pseudo selection. Wait. Uh, no, the the color is the same. It's okay. No, the color is the same. And that's when it's checked. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. And that's probably just because you're scrolling over it with your mouse that those two showed up. No idea. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So th this is this is one of those things that it it is the way how they are using. It. What I would have tried right away is just checking on the scripts, because usually this kind of issues to grab values, grab values. Um, and store values and so on. Usually that's not done with CSS. That, that changes the style and whatever, but for getting to know if that is checked or not checked, 
I think is with JavaScript itself. So I would search can you, for- Can you try a, a single thing for me because, before we actually end it? Um, if you, as the computer style, um, over in your other hotkey code, the computed style um, where you pass it the first. Um, Here in the code. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not, um, yeah, over there, yeah. Just looking for some, I'm just looking at all the styles or computed apparently. Yeah, he's just checking. Yeah, none of them are there. User select. Look at that one that says user select. User select. Uh huh. Try to check it here. See if that changes. User select none. Oh, look at that. Oh, no, no. That's no, okay. Nope. None of them. Uh, one quick question uh, Are you using Selenium, right? Uh, no, I'm using Tromp and Ahaka. That, uh -huh. Then you don't need to install Selenium and you don't need to update the Chrome driver. All right, because I was uh, give you one code there in the chat, but um, I, that like I tested it a lot in in many websites and it works, but it, that is with Selenium. So that's the that's the thing. I don't know with with this type of of approach. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. So if if you go to the accessibility tab there, Dimitri, where you actually found the true value, and just yeah. hover over it, what does the line actually say? So it's saying something. Uh, radio button, so three items is checked, unchecked, or mixed. They has both checked and unchecked children. Hmm, that's kind of weird. So it does kind of, to me, it kind of feels like it, it does have some kind of pseudo element under it when it's actually checked. But for some reason, the tree is not being updated with that pseudo element. But right. yeah, um, that that's kind of why the next thing I wanted to do was with your auto hotkey code here, where you have the evaluate. Um, you're passing to get computed style. You're passing document get element by ID, blah blah blah. Content get elements by class name, blah blah blah. Focusable zero, right? And then comma without all that get property stuff. Here. Yeah. Yeah, delete all that. Away with the check as well and go into to the function just before that one. No, no, you're you're too far back. Okay. Uh, one more. There comma, and then let me just look at this. Uh, go with, um, you know, you wanna enter a string there. So string colon check. String. Uh, yeah, it, it is a string. You, you've now started typing a string. So you might need to use single, um, Quotes, right. Quotes, yeah. Ah, okay. And then enter colon, check. Colon. No, just the, the two the two dots, like the colon. Yeah, a colon. Mm, no, that would be... That's, that's say, quotes. Colon, no. that's, you know... Just, this one here, you see that? Ah, okay, so... Yeah. Not a problem. Fair enough. And then checked. With capital or without? Without. Yeah, without, yeah. And then after the ending for parentheses, yeah, uh, dot 
and what's it saying? It's saying dot content. I don't know exactly what that will give you. Uh, normal. That's normal. How about That's go ahead, go ahead and uncheck it and see if that changes. No. Still so, normal. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what content actually is returning. Um, it doesn't really describe it here. It just goes into that some, something specific to these this computed styles. Right. So you can use that as the optional a string representing a specific pseudo element to match. Uh -huh. The return style is a live CS style declaration object, which updates automatically with the element styles of change. Anyway, uh, they're they're not talking specifically about the checked property here, but I was just like, it probably has that property. Um, styles for text content styles get property yeah still not really describing exactly what i wanted to get by getting in here do you think you can what what type of pseudo element specifics could you drag out of that um Content. I'm, I'm just not sure what content actually. Uh, oh, oh, it actually, it is apparently content is in this example, it is a CS style of uh, the, uh, the object, but we don't really know if that pseudo element has uh, a content element so maybe just go with value or out of html or something like that so that's just blank so apparently content had the value of normal there might be other Yeah, sure enough, you couldn't use auto HTML because you're now actually looking at the computed styles. No. <laughs> I'm just looking. Rah, rah, rah. Uh, maybe access using the get property value or by indexing directly into an object. Uh, the values returned by get computed styles are resolved values. These are usually the same as CSS 2.1 computed values, but I'll okay. some more. Um, guys, I will have to go now. Yeah, fair um, enough. Yeah. You might not end up actually solving it, but yeah. how about if you did like uh, with just to try something to see if what? It, what? Yeah, just to see if, if that checked element actually has a width. No, so. just keep checked. But instead of uh, get property value, you just simply said width, you you know the the, the width of it. It's I uh, yeah, exactly. Let's so I'm going to talk to you guys later. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank, thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Was that just blank or no? Oh, well, it actually is 13 pixels. So we're getting somewhere. How about mm, if checked is checked? On the, wasn't it actually the value checked that it was saying? Try with the word checked. No, no. sir. Sure. Sure.
that's amazingly irritating. But yeah, yeah, I'm. I don't. I don't have any more ideas. Oh, it's it's. <laughs> I, I think I already uh, learned a lot about uh, the styles and how to access those elements if we would ever need them. Yeah. Uh, but it, it would have been like, uh, I would have liked to simply um, uh, be able to just loop over uh, the styles of the, the check pseudo uh, element if it actually had that one now it's not checked so i'm kind of like does it then actually have a checked pseudo value it might it we can have... loop over it still seems to be the same large size of uh, styles that we already know. And then Uh, is it value? Let's I'm not it. sure if it was value. Okay, I get. Yeah, uh, some part of it didn't work, so fair enough. But yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you've gotten some things you can you can try uh, if you ever truly need to figure this out. But apparently, you found it out somewhere, somehow, some other way. But yeah, at least we figured out how to actually get the values of uh, styled uh, parts of an object. So. Sadly enough, we didn't actually figure out how to find out if an object was checked this way or not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you just try quickly the code that I sent on the chat? Just a quick test. <laughs> so weird, this stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, wait, I... Maybe, maybe some syntax I put wrong, but... Uh, uh, this is wrong. The syntax is like uh, we selected um, yeah I'm more familiar with selenium but <laughs> um, all the but same or but is selected, is that the JavaScript function? Uh, no, I use it on our hotkey as well. It's, it's, but, but yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's a built-in thing like uh, is focused and stuff like that. It, it is a value that usually exists. 
Isn't can you that, can you oh that, sorry that other method is a pain in the ass is that is that the thing no no one <laughs> <laughs> actually the other method is quite simple <laughs> can you check the box just to see if that works for some for something no <laughs> Can you remove the bracket zero and bracket? Uh, but we get get elements. Yeah. That's... So if you remove the this, then just, you just for get fun, anything. just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. Uh... I, I'm happy with the outcome that uh, even uh, the uh, people that I consider as uh, great experts <laughs> can't even, yeah, also, also find it difficult. Maybe it's possible if we go very, very deep, but right. is it necessary because I have another way? So, <laughs> but I was just wondering, actually, my question was, is it maybe some simple function that I just need to add afterwards and then it works? Then it's interesting to know, but if it's very complicated, uh, we have other methods and that also works. So, Yeah, and in most other cases, you would be able to check the, simply just read the checked uh, property of the element, which in this case, Right now, with what you have here, you're, you're asking an entire collection if it's selected, right? It's like evaluate document get elements by class, uh, but you're not, you're not saying uh, square bracket zero, and you have the is selected outside of the actual evaluated. Yeah, but. Uh, it's it's all not working. <laughs> no, it's probably not working any of it. Um, and dot value or whatever. Yeah. I, I would guess that this is more logical, but apparently is selected isn't even a function. Oh. Yeah, I think it's is selected. selected. It won't work. Not a function. Yeah. But, but uh, and and last is checked maybe. I just think that's it was. That's our final attempt, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. No, it's, I don't think. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. one, last one, last one yeah. in, in the chat. Uh, just drop one code. I think for the next webinar, I'll start yeah, that's, by the hour. That's the original one, the checked value, just checking for the checked value. I think that's what we actually started with today. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, why not just <laughs> go for it? Check. Uh, yeah. Nothing like expected. Yeah. It, uh, but thank you very much for the attempt. It was, yeah, uh, was I learned great. a little no. bit. <laughs> but normally, this, the check property would be what you would be able to use, but apparently they're doing something weird on your company page here, where that's not the method used. Okay. Thank you very much and have a great night, everybody. Yeah, you too. Everyone. Yeah, so thanks for hanging out. Um, hopefully you all learned, um, I know I did, learned a bunch of stuff. Yeah, it's possible at least to, to get quite a lot of information about an element. You know, and it's all troubleshooting, right? That troubleshooting, that process of going through it, that, that is a really good thing to, to learn. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah.